we all we must have been there when maybe at some point in our life we needed to prepare for maybe a really important exam or maybe some presentation maybe some conference and although we worked really hard at the time of the exam or the presentation we just we couldn't remember anything or maybe we couldn't speak a word the anxiety at the time perhaps was so high that just our mind just went blank and these are just some of the examples of the impact that uh, emotional distress it can have on mental clarity. Hi, my name is Patricia. I'm the counseling psychologist registered with HCPC here in the UK. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the different emotional qualities contributing to our emotional intelligence and therefore as well contributing to what we can achieve actually in life. And most of the information that are included in this video, they're actually based on this really amazing book uh, so um, yes it's called emotional intelligence by Daniel Goldman uh, if anyone wants to learn more about neuroscience and psychology this book is definitely for you it's really fun and interesting book to read so going back to the examples I just uh, given uh, we can conclude that the emotional brain can actually paralyze the thinking the rational brain and we also know from research that when we are depressed or anxious it's so much more difficult to study it's so much more difficult to absorb any information there's actually a lot of research uh, among students and those students who are depressed or anxious, they do actually much worse at education. So when we suffer from anxiety or depression, our mind is uh, absorbed with uh, negative uh, thoughts, leaving very little space to process any other information. In those situations, when someone suffers maybe from anxiety or depression, their working memory, which is also the mental capacity, they're gonna be overwhelmed with the negative emotions of maybe self-pity, helplessness, self-blame, hopelessness, anxiety. And because of that, it's gonna be very difficult for someone to concentrate even to read a book or maybe to write a sentence. Uh, or even sometimes it's very difficult for people to talk because they still they need working memory even to, to Put together a coherent sentence so now let's think about what happens when we experiencing positive emotions such as enthusiasm zeal confidence there is a research indicating that actually famous musicians and sportsmen they have this unifying trait the ability to actually motivate themselves to pursue their goals the other thing that is also unifying for them is the the fact that they started on very early the trainings and then con they continue the trainings throughout their life even though they had certain setbacks the the research also says that the main factor that actually allowed them um, to continue the training for many many years even though maybe they had certain setbacks was the enthusiasm and persistence we all must have heard about the marshmallow experiment or maybe we've seen there's so many actually videos on youtube where people they just sat their kids with marshmallows or with other treats and then and they they give them the choice of uh, you can eat them now or you can wait till i'm gonna be back and then you can get uh, extra treats or extra marshmallows and the actual original psychological research was uh, conducted on four years older children based on this research we actually learned that perhaps one of the most uh, uh, basic and also the most fundamental psychological skill is to be able to delay the gratification and to resist the impulses and that means by being able to control our emotions our impulses we are also able to control our behaviors i remember what happened with the research uh, 12 to 14 years uh, later the same kids were actually tracked down and the researcher continue and they actually realized the kids who at four years old were able to delay the gratification and they waited for the adult to come back in order to receive more marshmallow they actually they were doing much better 12 14 years later in their life they had much better uh, social circles they were much better at their confidence they were able to cope much better in stressful life situations 
they were still much better at actually controlling and delaying their gratification in order to achieve their goals. And actually they were also much better at embracing new challenges and pursuing them even though maybe there were certain setbacks. And also 12-14 years later when they reviewed their grades at school, the kids again who um, delayed the gratification at four, four years old, they were doing much better at the education as well. Walter Mitchell, who's actually the researcher who conducted the marshmallow experiment, he talks about the emotional intelligence and he says that the emotional intelligence can actually determine how well we're gonna do in life. Based on, on his research, how we can actually, you could say, measure the emotional intelligence is by uh, noticing uh, whether the person can actually delay the gratification in order to achieve their goals. So the part of uh, knowing what the goal is here is actually really crucial. And then later, Daniel Goldman, he talks about uh, different research that has been conducted in context of anxiety. So he talks about uh, 100 studies that have been conducted on 36,000 students and this research actually tells us that the more prone students there are to anxiety, the poorer the results are in the education. Definitely in some cases anxiety can actually help us to succeed, so maybe in situations where maybe we need to prepare for the exam, or maybe some speech, or maybe some conference, uh, and then we have to motivate ourselves. So in those cases, maybe anxiety can actually be helpful. But overall, in situations when maybe there's a chronic anxiety, that will definitely then undermine how we perform in certain tasks. And that kind of anxiety will also undermine our mental capacity. So our ability to think and plan and reason. And then because of that as well, that will impact how well we're going to do overall in life. The ideal state that we would like to be in and to reach our highest potentials is the state of a hypomania or sometimes it's also called state of fluidity or state of euphoria. So that means that moments when we experiencing really good moods can actually enhance how we perform on some tasks and uh, when we are under this state then we have the highest um, capacity to think flexibly and as well to be efficient when we think about very complex uh, ideas. There was a researcher conducted asking uh, some participants uh, to watch uh, funny videos and the results they indicate that the people who were exposed to those funny videos, they actually were able to perform much better at solving some difficult puzzles, comparing with the control group who were just exposed just to normal videos. And this researcher concluded that being in a good mood can enhance creative thinking. So he talks then about the research uh, within which students with the higher levels of hope, they set themselves higher goals. But here the hope as well wasn't defined as that naive view that yeah, everything's gonna be fine. But the hope was defined as a having this belief that you have the will and that you will accomplish your goals. So that means being actually able to see potential ways of how you're gonna achieve your goals. And what we also learn from this really interesting research on hope is that people who actually score higher on hope, uh, they are able to motivate themselves better they are also able to see the resources within themselves to achieve the goals that they set for themselves. They are also better at being flexible whenever needed. And also they are really good at motivating themselves specifically in times of setbacks. Therefore, having hope in context of the emotional intelligence means that someone is actually not giving in to the overwhelming sense maybe of anxiety in times of setbacks. A very similar studies actually have been conducted in context of optimism and they had uh, similar results. So um, in context of the emotional intelligence, if uh, people that are able to feel more optimistic in terms of the setback, they obviously, the optimism is gonna prevent them from uh, feeling depressed or hopeless or helpless. And then because of that, it's gonna be much easier for those uh, people to continue with pursuing their goals. Just to give you a better understanding of how we can conceptualize uh, optimism, I will give you, you could say, definition 
of optimism in context of success and failure. So you can imagine a situation where two people are going to interviews and both of them, they actually they fail, so they don't get the job. And the first person who failed the interview, he will think of the, the failure as, all right, so, you know, I felt, I feel bad, but let's see what I can learn from it. Let's see what I can improve so I will do better on the next uh, interview. Where the other person who also failed the interview will actually start feeling really bad. Maybe he will also start blaming himself and think like that's the end. Like I'm not gonna never progress in life. I'm not gonna never be able to get this job. And that failure will actually discourage the person from progressing, from maybe learning and moving forward. And I think from this very simple example, we can see that by how we attend to the failure can actually have detrimental impact on whether we're going to progress in life or not. At this point, perhaps you're actually asking yourself, so how I can be more optimistic, how I can have more hope? And it is true that perhaps some people maybe they are born uh, in a way where they are maybe more optimistic, maybe they are, they are born in a way where they have more hope, maybe it's to do with the environment where, where they grew up. But it is the same as uh, we can, at some point in life, we might start to develop uh, maybe feeling more hopeless or more helpless. So in that way, we can also learn how to be more optimistic or how to have more hope because our mental capacities are not fixed. So that means we can always change and reframe those different mental capacities. As Daniel Goldman, he says in his book that people's belief about their abilities will have profound impact on their abilities. If you found this video any helpful and useful, then please like it, subscribe, and I'm gonna see you in the next one then. Thank you. Bye.